You can't have failed to notice that televisions have changed an awful lot in the last few years. And if you are buying into the latest generation of TV technology, one of the trickiest parts will be, well, probably lifting your new 120 unit set out of the box without doing yourself a mischief. However, once it is standing up in the corner of your living room, you'll need to connect it to the rest of the world and get the best picture on it. And for that, you need Click's essential guide to setting up your telly. If you think computers are complicated, you obviously haven't spent the evening discussing the best ways to connect your TV. It is a minefield of acronyms and complicated looking plugs. And then of course there's getting the best picture. Now after you're switched on and tuned in, most TVs will allow you to set up the picture to how you like it and rest assured everyone's taste is different. The menu screen will probably point you to a picture setup area and there'll likely be some presets like these. Here, the TV offers a vivid setting where everything is louder than everything else and it confuses the heck out of our camera. The normal setting is standard and you can also have your own settings under the custom control. The same thing applies to the audio. Some TVs will have built-in processors that make it sound like you're listening in a hall or a church. Others just let you tweak the bass and treble. Now, another area that's caused lots of problems is aspect ratio, which is the height and width of the picture. This is a 16 by 9 picture on a 16 by 9 screen, and you can see it fills the side and people's heads don't look fat. This is a 4 by 3 picture on a 16 by 9 screen. See the black lines down the side there? Now, the TV will help you get rid of these black bars and stretch the picture for you if you like that sort of thing. Now, for those of you that want to connect other units to your TV, we move into connector land. And the good news is there's likely to be connectors all over your TV. Joy. Now, obviously on the back, but also on the side or front. These are usually the yellow composite video connector and the round S video connector. They're generally for connection of still or video cameras and they allow you to watch your pictures on your TV. They're normally on the side or front to make them easier to get at. You'll see that the yellow connector cable comes with two other connectors. The white and red connectors are for the audio. Now, while S-Video is slightly better quality than composite, it doesn't have any audio, so if you use this connector, you'll still need to connect the audio via the red and white cables. The back of the TV has the rest of the connectors. The next best connector is RGB, which is three connectors, usually green, blue and red. They're much less common than composite and S-Video, but are worth using if your device supports it. The big ugly connector is known as a SCART connector. This can be used for transferring composite, S-Video and even RGB, but the trick is setting up the devices you're connecting and this means reading the manual. Last up is the HDMI connector. Now this is the top end connection, high definition audio and video. More and more devices are coming with these connectors, but be warned, the cables can be very expensive. And if you want it to sound better, you can always plug it into your stereo. There are usually a couple of audio plugs that allow you to connect it directly, but you do need to have the stereo speakers close at hand. And as usual, that essential guide will be filed alongside all our past essential guides at our website, bbc.co.uk. If you want to know anything about anything, that is your place to go.